Hello Recap Lovers, welcome to Mystic Recaps. In today's video we will watch a 2019 American psychological thriller film Joker. Stan Brooks, the news anchor, begins his report on the rubbish collection strike in front of a live audience, as he addresses the public's growing discontentment with this situation. We are taken inside to Arthur who is preparing for an evening performance as a clown. The citizens of Gotham express their outrage at these events and it is clear that tensions are running high. Arthur is clad in a clown outfit and holding up a sign, attempting to promote the soon-to-be-defunct Kenny's music shop. His face is painted into a smile as he performs various tricks and dances in an effort to draw people's attention, yet sadly some teenagers take advantage of his plight by taunting him before snatching away his sign and running away. The dejected look on his face speaks volumes of how disheartened he feels. Arthur chases after the teenagers, but they hit him with his sign and give him a thrashing. He goes to a social clinic afterwards, laughing maniacally. When he talks to the psychiatrist about life in the city, she brings up his journal. Arthur explains that it is used both as a journal and for stand-up comedy jokes. The psychiatrist wonders if talking to someone would help him feel better, but Arthur states that being in hospital would have been preferable. He requests extra medications from her. She informs him that he already has seven medications, but he insists that he does not want to feel so bad anymore. While on the bus later, Arthur makes faces at a young child sitting behind him. Arthur laughs, but the mother scolds him for bothering her son. His laughter quickly turns into an uncontrollable fit and the woman is offended. Arthur then presents her with a card saying that he has a neurological condition causing him to laugh in this manner. After checking his mailbox, Arthur heads upstairs to his apartment. His mother inquires whether there was any mail waiting for him, and he replies negatively. The mom claims that Thomas Wayne must not be receiving her letters and Arthur remarks that at least he could have replied in writing since she had worked for him for years. At that moment, the TV switches on, with Murray Franklin's show on air. As Murray steps onto the stage accompanied by some jazzy music, a voice in the audience yells out I love you. Murray locates the source of that voice and sees Arthur standing there. He inquires where he lives, to which Arthur answers with his mother. The audience erupts in laughter at this response but Murray remains supportive, saying he also lived with his mother before making it big. Arthur takes great joy in looking after his parents and Murray, the show's host, is so impressed with him that he invites Arthur on stage. He remarks that he would give up the show any day to have a son like Arthur. Arthur's worn face appears even leaner as he ties his laces. Randall bursts into the room with news of Arthur's assault, offering a gun for protection. Jesting banter ensues between Randall and Gary, a small man who had just stepped in before they reveal Hoyt's desire to converse with Arthur. Upon arriving at Hoyt's location, it is revealed that the music shop proprietor has accused him of taking down one of their signs, thus prompting the request that it be returned immediately. He explains he was assaulted, yet Hoyt has the nerve to inform him that it would be deducted from his salary. Arthur's fury is palpable as he storms away. With all his might, he kicked the dumpster and collapsed onto a mound of trash. As he trudged homeward to check his mail, a female voice called out for him, prompting him to prevent the elevator doors from closing. Sophie and her child, Jiggy, rush inside the building and Sophie expresses her gratitude to Jiggy. She expresses frustration with the building and pretends to shoot herself with her fingers. When the elevator arrives and they exit, Arthur calls out to Sophie and imitates a gunshot. Sophie smiles and goes into her room. Next Arthur baits her mother who suspects that the mailman is throwing away her letters. Arthur inquires why Thomas Wayne would be willing to help him, to which she responds it is due to the fact that he is a kind-hearted person. Arthur does not want her to stress about money, and so he determines he should take his stand-up routine to bigger clubs. His mother questions if one has to be amusing in order to become a comedian. He sits in the living room, aiming his gun at various stuffs. After loading it, Arthur starts dancing with it while speaking out loud how good of a dancer he is. Suddenly, he fires off shots. The following day, Arthur traces Sophie and attends a stand-up show. Later on, when Sophie appears at his house asking if he had followed her, Arthur agrees and proposes to rob her office the next day. Arthur is putting on a clown performance at a children's hospital when his gun suddenly drops to the floor. Hoyt immediately reprimands him for bringing the weapon into the show and dismisses him. However, Randall intervenes and offers to purchase it from Arthur. As he rides home on the train, still wearing his clown makeup, Arthur finds himself sitting near a young girl and her three mentees. All of a sudden, he bursts out into hysterical laughter, causing the girl to stand up in surprise and quickly leave. Arthur laughs when he sees the three men approaching him on the train, but his amusement turns to fear when they start beating him. In a desperate attempt to protect himself, Arthur shoots two of them. The third man attempts to flee, only for Arthur to shoot him in the leg before he could get away. He drags himself into the nearest restroom, where he calms himself by performing a slow dance. Once the panic subsides, Arthur makes his way back to his apartment and kisses Sophie before packing up his stuff from the clown studio. When the piano man inquires about the gun, Arthur suggests that he ask Randall instead. Meanwhile, Thomas Wayne gives an interview on television about the subway murders, implying that only a cowardly person wearing a mask would commit such an act. 
He visits his psychiatrist, only to find out that the city has cut their funding and is closing the offices next week. She can't answer any of his questions about his medication so he leaves with Sophie for a stand-up gig. Back at home, Arthur's mother tells him to mail a letter she had written and when he reads it, he discovers that Thomas Wayne is his father. Determined to meet him, Arthur travels to Wayne House and attempts to make young Bruce smile with some finger tricks. Alfred the butler appears and tells Arthur that his mother was delusional when she said she had a relationship with Mr. Wayne. In a last attempt to prove himself as Thomas Wayne's son, Arthur grabs his throat through the gate and states that he was left by Wayne. Later, Arthur is standing outside the emergency room when two officers question him about the subway murders and why he was fired. He tries to explain his condition but eventually walks away in frustration. Arthur has trouble sleeping and absently watches television. He finds out that Thomas Wayne will be attending a charity event and there is going to be a protest with people wearing clown masks and makeup outside. Taking this as a sign, he makes his way to the benefit from the ceremony and follows Thomas Wayne into the washroom. Arthur confronts him about Penny Fleck and insists that he is his father. Thomas Wayne punches him in the face and tells him that she adopted him while she worked at Arkham Hospital and walks away. After this, Arthur receives an invitation to appear on the Murray Franklin show as a guest. Arthur visits the Arkham Hospital, inquiring about Penny Flex's records. After being read her diagnosis of delusional psychosis and endangering herself, he comes to understand that Penny is his mother. Without hesitation, Arthur snatches the file and runs away with it. Taking a look inside he finds his adoption application and reads further to comprehend how she had allowed him to be physically and mentally traumatized during his childhood. He then stops by Sophie's apartment, only for her to tell him that he is in the wrong place. To Arthur's dismay, he realizes that being with Sophie was only a figment of his imagination. Returning to the hospital, Arthur confronts Penny with his life being a comedy as he suffocates her with a pillow and kills her. Arthur returns to his apartment and begins rehearsing for his highly anticipated appearance on The Murray Franklin Show. He practices delivering his jokes, as well as pulling out an empty gun, putting it to his throat and clicking it. As a way of honoring his mother's death, he dyes his hair green and puts on white paint. Randall asks Arthur what he told the police who have been visiting the shop, so that their accounts of the events match. Arthur thanks Randall for his concern, but then becomes violent and attacks him by stabbing him in the eye and bashing his head against the wall multiple times. Arthur sits there, exhausted and out of breath as Gary weeps uncontrollably. He kindly informs him he will be on the Murray Franklin show and tells him to go home. But Gary can't unlock the door and pleads with Arthur to open it for him. Despite everything that has happened, Arthur takes pity on Gary and opens the lock. He kisses him on the head as a farewell gesture and lets him go. Afterward, Arthur puts on his makeup and suit and dances merrily down the stairs. Suddenly, the cops arrive and he quickly dashes away. As he runs, he is hit by a speeding car but continues running until he reaches the subway station. He blends in with the crowd of people wearing clown masks, and the police officers are unable to identify him. Officer Burke spots him but before he can make an arrest, a scuffle erupts that ultimately helps him escape. Next Murray meets him and insists that he put on a clean show. Arthur agrees and requests to be introduced as the Joker. Murray grants his wish and presents him on stage. Arthur greets him and Dr. Sally her with a handshake and a kiss. When asked about his appearance, the Joker reveals that it is not meant to be political and that he simply wants to make people laugh. When prompted by Dr. Murray to tell a joke, Arthur reads one from his journal which is deemed offensive. He advises him against being insensitive, but Arthur claims it has been tough since killing the man on the subway. Murray questions him about this, to which he replies that it was funny. He adds that he murdered the men because they were terrible people. Arthur further vents his anger towards society and Murray, finally pulling out a gun and shooting him in the head. News coverage shows Murray's murder, with Arthur being arrested. Arthur observes the increasing looting and rioting from outside. The police officer warns him against laughing or smiling, but he exclaims that it is beautiful. Suddenly, an ambulance rams into their car. Somewhere else Thomas Wayne and his family emerge from the theater and make their way through an alleyway, but they are followed by a man wearing a clown mask. The man then proceeds to shoot them dead. The rioters soon grab Arthur and place him on the bonnet of the car. He spreads his bloody smile with his fingers, prompting the mob to cry out louder. The scene shifts to a hospital where Arthur is cuffed and smoking. When asked why he finds it funny, he responds that he was thinking of a joke. When pushed to explain he responds, with the iconic line, you probably wouldn't understand it. That concludes today's video. If you've enjoyed this video, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, 